Hey everybody, it's Jim here. In today's little quick lesson slash conversation, I'm gonna be talking about dynamics, how you can implement them into your playing, why they are so important, and how to use them in general. This is originally taken from a live stream, and the only reason I'm filming this after the fact is because initially there was about five minutes starting with the live stream that things didn't go so well with the audio, we had technical issues, so in an effort to kind of save you watching me fumble through and say, is this working, is this working, I ended up recording the second half of it, which is what you're going to be seeing right now. Before we get into it though... If there's anything you would like to see on these weekly streams, we're going to try and keep them short and to the point on Sundays with the guitar lessons. Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, I hope you take something away from this and don't forget to play your guitar. talking I'm preaching I think there's by default a noise gate on this app that I'm using with the Marshall but the point stands of, of just stuff like that so right now I don't want you to necessarily mimic what I'm playing like I'm not telling you what I'm playing or anything like that I'm just trying to get you to hear um, the differences in little things because when you use dynamics correctly like that it just just it could be so subtle you don't have to play anything difficult but you can actually get people's attention a little bit more by using dynamics in your playing and using the volume knob I, I, I'm gonna repeat this because at the beginning of this uh, this stream when I didn't know if the sound was working or not it, it was something I focused on if, if you have a decent guitar and by a decent guitar it doesn't need to be uh, 1000, 2000, 3000, whatever I mean a guitar that's just functioning correctly and more specifically that your volume and your tone controls are, are, are effective and they're not one of those ones where if you turn the volume down a little bit, it sucks like all of the tone out of the guitar. That's why electronics actually really are important. They're all going to sound good at full vol at full uh, openness. But once you start to roll them off, if you have a quality pot in here, you're not going to have as much loss. And it's much more usable. So we'll just run through it a little bit. So a little bit, a little bit of volume. A little more. More apparent with the bridge pickup again. We'll do the same thing. We'll just start maxed out. And I'm still hitting the strings pretty hard. It's just the volume actually on the guitar itself makes a big difference. That's a little bit more. It makes all the difference in the world. No pedals, no dancing, no altering of the amp or anything like that. Just a little bit of a softer touch. And when I, when I was just doing that, I realized subconsciously something that, that, that I do often too. When I play thumb over, not everybody does this, but the thumb over is just basically I'm playing the main triad here, so I'm playing an A major triad. But then I'm also playing the A with my thumb over on the E string. So I'm creating the bass note. That's the note that I'm actually strumming the lightest. So. Weird stuff. 
So, I would recommend that you just give all of this stuff, whenever you're practicing, a little bit of a thought. Because, again, with, the, with, with somebody mentioned compressors earlier, and also, you, I've heard a lot of really good guitar players, uh, technical guitar players, when it comes to just lightening the touch a little bit. Whenever you're practicing something or you're learning a new riff, Learn it the right way or the way that it's recorded or the way that you want to play it. But then also learn how to tone it down a little bit. Even if you're not going to use it for that specific song or that specific application, it's going to build the muscles and the muscle memory needed in here to be able to use dynamics and a little bit of a more finesse touch to your playing. And it, may, it literally makes all the difference in the world because I would say like 95% of the stuff that I play on this channel is, is not difficult as far as the theory of it goes. So really the way that it kind of stands apart and I've, I, I have my own like sound, if I even want to call it that, it is just dynamic playing. That, that's pretty much it. It's just making good use of, you know, the guitar and, and my right hand. That, that That's it. If you could do that, you can work with nothing too fancy, just really basic kind of shapes and uh, ideas and stuff like that. And you can make it sound a lot more interesting. And it doesn't cost you any money. You don't have to go and buy anything to do that. Just spend the time to actually sit with your guitar and, and do it. Uh, one thing I will say is with, with humbucking instruments, it can be a little bit squirrelier because you you need a lot of that uh, high end to still maintain through. With a, with a guitar like a Tele, this is very um, uh, high frequency bass guitar, it's a single coil, it's got twang to it. When you plug in a humbucker guitar, uh, rolling off the volume it is pretty effective uh, at, at kind of mm, leveling it out a little bit, making it a little bit more uh, sweet, so to speak. But if you roll it off too much, you're going to lose a lot of the bite. And it's, it could be really good if you wanted to do jazz tones and stuff like that. But really, uh, I, my approach kind of changes if I'm going from a single coil guitar to a humbucking guitar. Because on the humbucking guitar, uh, I will focus more on my right hand uh, compensating for any of the dynamics. Uh, less so than on a Fender style guitar where I'm going to be rolling off the volume or potentially the tone knob a little bit more. Unless I'm playing something jazzier, which can also make uh, a gigantic difference as well. So... That was halfway. This is all the way. Halfway. Off. We're going to play that riff right now, too, and show you again about dynamics. So I'm just going to be doing that consistent chuck here. So. And when you do stuff like that, yeah, you can be chucking. It's a natural kind of dynamic I have where I was talking about before. A good example of it. I'm hitting the bass strings here, or the, the lower notes, a little bit softer. And then when I'm upstroking on the chuck, it's, it's actually, that's when I'm really accenting the chord itself. all there is to it uh, as far as the idea of it not that phrase or anything like that but uh, yeah rhythm playing it's really important you'll do that there's gonna be times where you are just gonna want to sit on whatever note it is so it's like And you're literally just going to be background fodder at that point, and you want to have you know that consistent volume and, and pick attack to to whatever you're playing. But especially once you have um, um, cleaner parts or parts that aren't as big in the song, 
uh, dynamics are going to be a lot more apparent and you can make better use of them because there's not going to be as much that you're kind of battling against in, in the context of the rest of the band as far as other instrumentation and then their volume levels as well and then you can build it all back up and there's so many great records that that illustrate really really excellent use of of dynamics and, and, and a good wide sonic range it's it, it's there's Pretty much anything that you could buy from the 60s into the mid-70s, you're going to hear this a lot. Uh, Steely Dan records, old Steely Dan records, even if you don't love the band, I, I would give them a serious listen on good monitors, and you, you're going to see like, oh, wow, like there's so much there. There's so much cool um, like f changes in the feel. And, and the most important part of that, and actually before I wrap this up, I don't want to meander too much here. Um, you're, you're creating ups and downs. So if you have like a real, really powerful part to a song, by using dynamics beforehand, whether it is by manipulating the volume or whether it is by just strumming just a little bit lighter, you're setting them up with a lull to build so that when you do have your very big, powerful, everything going at once, kind of chorus or bridge or whatever part of the section or solo, whatever it is, it feels that much more impactful. And then you can let them back down naturally. And when you don't have dynamics in your playing or, you know, something is over compressed or something like that, it's much harder to achieve that when you're, when you're writing and you're composing and you're performing. And it's, it's definitely a skill that, that takes some time. But again, this is somebody, it doesn't matter what level of guitar player you're at. You can start implementing these kinds of things softly or, or, or gradually into your playing. Even if you're just playing basic full-on bar chords, it, it really doesn't matter. You can always improve your right hand. And that the entire basis of all of my technique is based off of this. Because when I was starting to play guitar, that's the last thing I'm going to get over right here, um, I was playing in in the late 90s a lot of pop punk and uh the kind of like almost ska like that third wave ska rhythmic fish lesson jake all those kinds of bands so what you would hear is a lot of music where it was like this now it's nothing to that but what that taught me was the right hand It's like a clap. You hear it? Two, one, two, one, two. What that also does is it's going to build up your internal metronome too. So it's going to help you stay in time better as long as you're playing to a click track to establish the timing that you're in. But And then you just, once you have you know your motor going, make things a little bit more interesting. Um, just play some notes a little softer, some notes a little bit quieter, like we were going over in some of the earlier stuff, and you're good to go, and it can make things a whole heck of a lot more interesting uh, when you're playing and performing. So my advice to you guys is next time you're practicing, no matter what it is, try and implement a little bit more of dynamic control. Focus more on your right hand when you're playing. Just, you know, think about things a little bit, not so much in terms of speed or difficulty, but think about it in terms of how you're hitting the notes. How are you holding the pick? Where are you hitting the strings? Because that makes a big difference too if you hit it closer to the neck, so to speak, um, as opposed to closer to the, the bridge, you're gonna have very, very um, differing sounds and tonalities that are gonna come out from there. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So last thing I'm gonna leave you with, I'm gonna do this right now because this is what I always do. I stretch. Vitally important. I'm going to try and actually play um, for a bit after this. But once you do any warm-up, I skipped it in the beginning today because we had the technical difficulties. And, yeah, it was a really awkward start to the stream. But stretching your hands out, especially when you're, when you're doing things with your wrist, a lot of wrist motion and stuff like that, it's really important. You don't want to, to skip this stuff. And it's one of the one things that I learned from Corey Wong that has stuck with me and, and I do it all the time and my hands almost never cramp. They always feel ready and you can play for longer and it, it's just, you gotta think of your body uh, the way an athlete thinks of their body. You know, a professional football player or whatever sport it is, 
they're not just going to jump in and go full speed ahead without warming up a little bit. So I recommend that you do that. I actually really, really, really recommend that you do that. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, yeah, there'll probably be a re-upload of this shortly thereafter. And I will see you on the next video. Take it easy.